yes hello am i audible hello हेलो Uh, hello या हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल रिया एन सोहार्दो याट आर देर सम पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु हैव नॉट येट कनेक्टेड और एनी फ्रेंड्स ऑफ योर्स हु said they would come but have still not uh, connected or something like that you could uh, tell them that the session has started all right so i guess these are the participants that we will be having today so let us start the session today we will be repeating our session on python that we had yesterday and also we will try to do something more if possible if time permits and as for the competitive programming session that we had decided upon that will be done in offline that is uh, rashid mehdi of third year cse and will be taking the lead for delivering the sessions so that would be an offline session and if you would like to send me or chat with me you can get the chat option on the in the more tab with the or you could use alt plus h to open the chat window so that you could chat you can chat with to me as well as everyone who are attending this session so let's start all right so Uh, would you like to introduce yourselves it would be nice i guess sitam was present yesterday and so are the two so riya and amos if you would please introduce yourselves
I guess they don't have their mics with them. So let us continue. So first of all, what is Python? So Python is a programming language, as you would know. Uh, should I continue in English or would Bengali be okay or like whatever you would like? Right. 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 Yesterday's session was in Bengali uh, mostly. So let's <laughs> do in English today. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, Python, the creator of Python is Guido Van Rossum and it came around the nineteen. 90s all right so now he was inspired to name the language python due to an interesting fact that he had there was a show on tv that was named uh, monty python's flying circus and from there he was inspired to name this language as python which is a hilarious one so yeah all right so uh, let us continue further and now why should we use python or rather what are the benefits of using python first of all it is a beginner friendly language it is easier for beginners to catch up with python as, due to the simple syntax and english like uh, syntax of python language that uh, helps the beginners to catch up quickly and program easily so now the other benefits that python provides are python is now being presently used for machine learning purposes and deep learning purpose for uh, building neural networks and all those kind of stuff if you are interested you could take a look and apart from that python is also used for scripting uh, mainly the hackers if you would uh, search on the net generally use python for scripting purposes and apart from that um, python has its own benefit of being a bit more human like have, having a bit more human like syntax and as for disadvantages obviously python everything has its own advantages and disadvantages and python 2 has some like python is uh, interpreted language which makes it slow during execution also uh, python is a dynamic type language so some of the times you face problems like you assign something to some object or variable if you are unable to understand it's all it is okay now we will continue further into the session and you will i hope you will be able to make sense and so as for them who have already learned c plus plus or java in the 11th or 12th class so i hope they can relate that if you declare some variable as int or something like that then that variable should contain only that type of object but in here python everything is an object and there is no such thing as static typing that is a variable can contain anything we don't define something as an uh, variable that can contain only integer or something like that all right so moving on uh, let us see how to install python we will be using the solution provided by the python software uh, foundation psf so we will go to python.org and if someone faces some difficulty or they have some question they can ask me all right so after going there go to downloads then to windows and then we will be using the version python 3.6.x whatever sub version of 3.6 that doesn't matter but the 3.6 should be we should be using the 3.6 version or let so here is the link 
Oh, another note that if you are using Windows XP or earlier, you may not be able to use Python 3.6. Mm. We will be coming to that later. For them who cannot use, I will also say how can they access as of now to continue with the session. All right, so I can share the link. All right, I am sharing the link. all right after you download it there are some thing that i should say from before like when you are installing python please don't install it in the c drive or whatever drive you have installed upon and also uh, while installing the python set the uh, click means click the option that says to set the python path and also to install it for all the users that would help you out in the future while developing on python or using python for purposes means for more purposes like not only for simple coding or, or developing on developing something in python all right so i am waiting for a minute or two you start download the thing and start the installation of python and then we shall start with i shall say something uh, like the introductory type thing while you install the solution all right so after installation you will find two things that is you will find this ideally and with this ideally comes means we can execute the python either directly using the by executing each line separately we can make a program like any other language and save it in a file and execute the whole file all right so here under file we have a new file option and we can write something save it and then execute it we will be using the ideally to start off all right so i hope a minute or two has passed and you have finished started the installation process so just all right uh, acha for them those who cannot install python or have windows versions like windows xp or older versions they can go to the home page of python.org that is www.python.org then as you can see here this yellow button saying uh, saying to launch the interactive shell you can press on it and the interactive shell will launch whatever we are doing here in the ideally that you can perform it over here as well so i hope you won't be facing any problems okay so first of all let us start with the hello world program program as we do in any other language yes someone was saying something hello yes hello uh, i guess you could increase your microphone volume a bit or like take the microphone near to your mouth or you could use the chat option too uh, the sound is not that audible i guess that is the background noise coming from someone all right so let us start with the hello world program uh, we will 
do the hello world program mm -hmm. and you will be surprised to know that it is such an ease to do things in python and with this we are done the hello world program just print within brackets in semicolon uh, sorry not in semicolon double inverted commas so you write hello world and that's it python interpreter interprets it and hello world is printed no need of importing in library or something like that as you do in if someone has experience with c or java no need of importing mm -hmm. anything just print all right so now next let us do something uh, interactive uh, i guess you could uh, do the same thing over your pc or laptop whatever you are using or you could do it on your on the website itself if that is taking time so after you are done you can say that yes we have done it or like you could do like something like print your name we have done it okay all right so let us proceed so next next what can we do all right uh, let us see how python programs are saved in file and then executed so new file like we already had one yeah so a new file so what we will do here is print hello world yes hello All right, so now what we have to do is save this, save. Then some name, this is our second session. So second session and save. Now for, for, to run it, we go to run, run module and here we go we have the output okay so now we have seen how things are done in ideally as well as how we save it in a file and then run the program as a whole thing now let us get into the uh, data types but before that uh, let us let me say something about the tokens or uh, that is the reserved keywords that have specific meaning in this specific programming language like here we have print print is a predefined keyword so we cannot use it for something else it is defined to be used for printing something obviously we can we will uh, learn as we go uh, course that we can change how print works but not in general so we should not be tinkering with them as of now all right and okay so now the data types in python let us open paint okay so there are basically three data types in python or rather not specifically like data types like categories of them So first we have numerical ones. Then we have the sequence types. And then we have the mapping type.
okay so what do we have in the numerical type in numerical type there are three types of numerical data types like in or integer then float and we have complex in the sequence we have string that is str then we have list and we have tuple and in the mapping we have dictionary all right apart from this we also have in python 3 boolean and boolean array but i guess we will explore them later so now as for the numerical types all right so let me do something like this this will help in people to understand so int so integer has no limitation in python like there is no upper limit or lower limit of any number anything you input that can be accommodated within the ram or the how much memory the system permits that can be used so suppose i do something like this var equals to and then i write one with many zeros until the until i feel satisfied so it can be any number of zeros okay now if we want to find out the value of var we can do is print the value of var like this for programs written in file we need to do like this but for the ideally we always don't need to use this we can also do this another way like only var and that will also do print the output so as you can see this number has been saved and this can be used the only limita limitation that we have here is the memory that is the ram or the system allocated memory that can be used by python so now next we move on to float so suppose var equals to something 2.3754 all right and then we print var all right here we go we have seen this that float is also being stored and printed all right uh, for inform for your information python uses double precision for storing the float variable tar ekta question chilo ya bolchi je eta er age var variable ta ke tumi oi 1000 jodi mane numerical mane ekta integer value assume korle ha tar pore sepe abar var ekta float value assume korle তো সেকেন্ড স্টেপ মানে যে ভেরিয়েবলটার নামটা তো আমি একই রেখেছি তো মানে সেকেন্ড যখন আমি একবার অ্যাজিউম করি তাহলে আগের অ্যাজাম্পশনটা কি ডিলিট হয়ে যাবে হ্যাঁ আচ্ছা হ্যাঁ এটা তাহলে এখনি ছবি একে বুঝিয়ে দিই যে আরেকটা নতুন করতে হবে ফাইল নিউ হাউ ওকে নিচে একে আচ্ছা তো যদি सपोज ভার we have 700 and then we have 2.375 so at first what happens is suppose var is our variable or 
rather like in other languages what happens is suppose a container like this is created when we declare var that can only contain contain objects of that type like if the var is of type int it can only only contain an int but here the thing is different it is like an object reference is stored like 700 is an object and what we store in var is an reference to that object not specifically that object but a reference to that object now when we assign two point something or something like float what happens is a new reference is created and Achha. this reference gets deleted this is how Achha. the assignment of variable happens in python so this has its own advantages and disadvantages as i said earlier during the start of the session that if we do not keep track of the assignment we might not uh, we might fall into trouble like we did not consider something and we assign something entirely different to a variable it won't give any error okay so now that has been done and said okay so next we have the complex type so as we know complex numbers so suppose var equals to 3 plus 4j and it goes viola okay so we can also perform complex numbers addition subtraction multiplication and division like 3 plus uh, sorry, not three. Two plus two j. Oh, sorry, we named it the same. Let us name them differently, like var one and var two. Var one, and then we have var two. Okay, so next what we can do is we can add them var1 plus var2 and we get the answer. We can multiply them. We get the answer. So this addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are supported by all integer, float, and complex, all these data types. All right, so next we have the sequence types. For the sequence types, what we have is first I said str or string. Uh, all right, so I would like to say something about this here that we do not have any character type as such in Python. Whatever is there is just string, even in M t character or something like any other language that thing too here is a string there is no character just string so suppose i do var equals to this then we can check the type using the type function you can use it with the previous uh, ones like when we declared var as integer it will return the uh, class of that object or rather what type of object it is if you do not understand class if like those who have done some programming they will understand whatever here we pass here we will get what type of object it is so it is of type string r equals to one two three a b c d And we get the string. So now we can print it. All right. So string is done. Next, how to define list? So for list, what we do is var equals to third bracket. Then the elements of the list, like one, comma. 2 comma 3 whatever like that 
also i would like to state this for them those who have done in c or c++ or java or something like that uh, the well they have to define a particular data type for an array here we don't have to declare any particular data type what we can do here we can do also do something like this and that will be ekta kotha bol ekta prashno chilo ha bol bolche da ei je mane string ta use korchi jokhon ei var equals to string declare kore diye tarpor print var korchi tarpor string tai asche to ekhane eta na kore direct to print jemon hello world korechilo mota kore dile to hoy var use korar jonno dorkar nei डिफाइन now we can print the list like print and here we go all right and for tuple we use the second bracket all right one difference between list and tuple is that list is mutable that is change in place is allowed and for tuple it is immutable that is change in place is not allowed also string is also immutable that is change is change in place is not allowed so what do we mean by change in place so by change in place we mean that suppose a sequence has been declared and some object is at a specific place in that sequence then that order cannot be changed like for bar we have like 1 2 3 a b c d so after declaration we cannot change like two can come front or something like that means with the same object we can obviously use a different object and then assign it to bar that is allowed but with this same object we cannot change so what do we mean by that we will come to that later in this session only but as for now let us Uh, move on to how to declare tuple and let us print the tuple all right so var equals to 1 comma 2 comma 3 and let us keep it the same way and here we go print So here we go. We have done. We are done with tuple. Now, let us next move to like how we can take input and how to provide the output, and then we will go back to what are the to explain the different data types and the different functions and how they work. Then we will move on to that, and after that, with the programming assignment, we will end this session. All right. So now. let us take input so how do we take input in python from the user so var input all right uh, something about the input function the input function whatever we enter through keyboard takes everything in input as a string so if we want to input an integer or rather store that thing as an integer we need to type cast so how do we do that we will come to that first but first let us see how this input function works so input then we can give a prompt like when the function is asking for input it will show that thing before taking the input so we could say like enter a number and with this we are ready to go let us input something like a b c let us check what has, what is there in var all right abc is there in var so now as i said earlier let us see how to type cast that is like you want to keep 
an integer in var after taking input from the user so how will you do that int input so something like five and now we oh all right we will do that thing too so now let us check the type of var that is we will know whether it is really an integer or rather a number so it is of type in now let us again repeat the previous thing and check the type by giving the input five five var now the type so it is a string so whatever we input using only the input function that is stored as string if we pass that into the typecasting operators like int float complex or other things then that is typecasted to that type of object if conversion is possible okay so now we have seen how to take input and output so let us do a simple program like enter your name and print the name so let us use the file for this now so this equals to input your name print it also we could do something more like var1 equals to int input all right let us see another interesting thing what happens if we don't pass anything in the input function as prompt in var2 equals to int input and then print var1 plus var2 let's save this control s and run it run module all right so let us enter a name now as we can see we did not give any prompt here so no nothing is being prompted but the execution has been halted for taking the input let us give two numbers two then three all right so we get the answer as five so this is how we take input output and perform operations and produce the results so now next we said we will move on to what are the various functions available for each of the data types and things we should know about them all right so for integer for integer we have as we said addition subtraction multiplication and division and nothing else more we have for integer yes nothing else for float and complex too all right let us check it out if you get stuck somewhere and you want to know something you don't have internet connection you can go to help and then docs like this and here you will find almost everything defined that comes in built with the python within its standard library and so we go to the python tutorial and then we go to numbers so we see how operators are used different how multiplication division addition subtractions are performed how to use them everything is defined in here and explained with examples provided and explanations given why what happens and why it happens that way 
so while writing programs if you get stuck somewhere obviously we are there to help but you could also refer here if you wish or you could also refer from here to learn new things there are many things which will which are not possible to be taught in these sessions as they are not required during the general programming so you could learn about them from here or you could also ask us obviously we will explain if we have knowledge on that or we will explain it later on all right so okay i also forgot some other operators that is the modulo operator and the float division operator so what does the modulo operator do the modulo operator returns the remainder so suppose 5 mod 2 so 2 if we divide 5 by 2 we get the remainder as 1 we should get 1 all right we get 1 and uh, what the float division operator does is let us first check the division operator first 5 by 2 2.5 now what float division does is it truncates the floating point part of the answer so we get 2 as the answer so you could use this in situations where you need only the integer as an output for a division and also division by zero is not allowed like two by zero it will it will obviously give an error that is zero division error okay so now let us move on next to the sequence types so what are the inbuilt functions for string so for string what we have are suppose let us take a string something 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 okay and next what we do is dot split bracket open bracket close we do not pass any parameters in here we will also talk about the parameters next so what happens for dot split is as we have not passed any parameter what the function does by default is it divides the string taking the spaces tabs backslash n that is new line character and the return feed characters and returns a list of that so let us run it All right so as we can see this part got split from the space and we get this object the next this object and in that way we continue now next what are the parameters for split so let us copy this thing enter all right and let us define a separator that is by which uh, uh, subsequence we should split this string uh, we have many repetitions of h yes we have many repetitions of h in this string so suppose we pass h as a parameter let us see what happens so as we see the string has been split using the h from the string we had h here we had split the string from here now next the other parameter for split is the count parameter that is for how many occurrences of that character would you like to split the string like for example we had one two and three splits for this h character or rather string so let us define two so only two splits will take place yes we have only three elements in the list now all right another thing is how to access the string elements like suppose we want to access the first element the second element so how do we do that let us define var as this okay now what we can do is var 0 we get s next 
for the next character one we get the next character all right another thing to mention here is the indexing in python starts from zero and ends at n minus one for us any object that has or a sequence that has n number of objects within it so for the last element what we have to do okay so how do we find out the length of the string we can simply do len and then pass the variable name and that's it so it is 42 so to get the access the last uh, last element we need to pass 42 minus 1 that is 41 okay so we get 7 the last character was 7 all right next what we can do here is we can also slice this string what does slicing mean let us do it by performing slicing suppose this so what does this mean let us execute and find it out so why did this happen what this thing means is by the semicolon we define the before the semicolon we have provided nothing and after the semicolon also we have provided nothing so this means that everything should start from the first and whatever is there till the end everything should be returned next we do a split suppose we want the first three elements then we should start from first so nothing at first then three so n minus so we go three it will be equated to n minus one as i have mentioned before so we get the three elements next there are also other possible ways of defining how to split the string like three five this is valid as well also negative numbers are allowed like python allows negative indexing so how does negative indexing to take place is the last character is indexed minus one then the character before it is indexed minus two and in this way this goes on until it reaches the uh, start of the string and for positive indexing that is from zero to n minus one we have the first character as zeroth index and the last character is n minus n minus one at index so let us do some negative indexing now so suppose minus one two minus six sorry this will not take place we cannot define it from the reverse so what we need to do is suppose 5 till minus 1 all right so the last character has been uh, removed and we start from the fifth character all right so fifth character is a okay next what we could also do is use negative index like minus 5 till minus 1 so any ideas or any guesses as to what will happen hello oh i guess everyone has gone to sleep so minus five yeah. hmm. अच्छा ठीक है चलो देखा जाए पहले की है एंटर तो वो ऐटा फिल्म तो एनी गेसेस एस कैन वो ऐटा होलो सेकंड माइनस वन नहीं तो वो चल रहा है तो Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-
একদম ঠিক বলেছিস যে শেষের থেকে পাঁচ নম্বর তো সাত তাহলে এক দুই তিন চার পাঁচ পাঁচ নম্বর ইউ আছে তাহলে ইউ থেকে লাস্ট অব দি মানে उल्टोटा तो डट जयन कर लेन कर अच्छा स्प्लीट कर তো আমি এটা পাবো কিন্তু আবার যদি জয়েন করি তাহলে এই ব্যাকস্ল্যাশ এন্টার থাকবে না ওই জায়গা স্পেস চলে আসবে ও আচ্ছা এরকম হয়ে যাবে কিন্তু আমি যদি এই জিনিসটা কি আবার দিই লাইক ওয়ার ব্যাকস্ল্যাশ এন্ট থাকছে কিন্তু এখানে হলে থাকছে না সরি আমি স্ল্যাশ দিছি মনে হয় না ব্যাকস্ল্যাশই দিছি হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে ঠিক আছে এইটাই तो एर पर जेटा आछे लिस्ट अट्टा पहले से हाँ लिस्ट अट्टा पहले की दी लिस्ट अट्टा पहले की क्या से लिस्ट अट्टा पहले वही एक ही जिनिस और समान समथिंग सम एलिमेंट्स वन टू थ्री समथिंग लाइक दिस एंड ऑल वही सेम पर वे एक्सेस करता है जीरो को ले फर्स्ट एलिमेंट n minus one, so oh, four. N minus four. Four sorry, sorry. 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 Four. So n minus one. Three. Uh -huh. Fourth element. Ah, shall I hold? One zero. Zero. Do the first element. N minus one. Ah. Uh -huh. फार्सिमेंट 
मान लाइक मध्यटर मध्य तो हम की हो बे तो हम बार बार हो बे और सेम जिनिस जो भी आवार कोडी एक्सटेंड बोला आ रखता है से तो ले एपेंड इले तरह की होच्छ ना जेटा जेटा मस्त स्ट्रिंग चिलो और साथे रिमेनिंग टा जुड़े गया चिलो मैं जी एपेंड टा में देखी ऐड स्ट्रिंग ऐड लिस्टेड जोन ऐड स्ट्रिंग के ऊपर काज कोड बना अच्छा ऐड ओके एपेंड एक्सटेंड दुबई सो आमी लास्ट टेक किसी को उत्तर परी म्यूटेबल होगा इम्यूटेबल आमल लास्ट ऐड करा टके म्यूटेबल इम्यूटेबल में मुद्दा पोच्चे ना किंतु चेंजिंग प्लेस टे इम्यूटेबल इम्यूटेबल रे मुद्दा पोच्चे लाइक द ऑर्डर कैन नॉट बी चेंज्ड ओके अच्छा चलो हम्म ऐड द कोटा जिनी स्टैड होलो लाइक वन टू थ्री कोटा लिस्ट स्टैड होलो एक टेलीमेंट उन मोड है किंतु एक्सटेंड कोल्ले सीक्वेंस कोटा सीक्वेंस तो सिंगल लिव वाइज ऐड होएगा लो वन टू और आप जो थ्री फोर फाइव दी तो पास पढ़े थ्री फोर फाइव ऐड हो एक नो ओके अच्छा वार डॉट एपेन वार डॉट एक्सटेंड और कैसे अपन तो आर किसी उम्मीद में पहुँचे ना अच्छा है टॉप पे ले जो चेंज इन प्लेस अलग करें ना शेटा देखी दी लाइक वार इक्वल्स टू लाइक टॉप एन वन कोमा टू कोमा थ्री कोमा फोर कोमा फाइव कोमा सिक्स तो ये खाने चेंज इन प्लेस ट्राई करो लाइक फर्स्ट एलिमेंट का हमें चेंज करो वो सेवन है तो अलाउ कर बना, किंतु सेम जिनी सामी कोर वो लिस्टेड चुनना, थर्ड ब्रैकेट, शेटा के अलाउ कर बे, लगा जा क्यों लो, चेंज होएगा सब, अच्छा, बुझे, तो ये टच चलेगा, लिस्ट आ रहा है ना, पारे साथे वही बात, थर्ड ब्रैकेट है, ये लिस्ट आ रहा है, अगर ये फर्स्ट ब्रैकेट दी तो स्ट्रिंग, तो लेट टपल डिक्शनारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकारिकार
एक्सेस करब कि डिक्शन वन सपोज वी वॉन्ट टू अपडेट सम प्रीवियस वैल्यू अपडेट हो गए अपडेट हो गए असाइन हो गए आर डिक्शनरी की आशे डिक्शनरी डिक्शनरी हम्म डिक्शनरी के डॉट अपडेट बोला आर एक टा फंक्शन है शे शेटा यूज़ करा जाए किंतु जनरली ऐसा कुम करे यूज़ करे काज बुलो हुए जाए फॉर्मेट टा आप आप तो मने पोर्च है ना शेटा ना है पोरे बोल वो चले ओके सो दिस दिस कंक्लूड सेशन एंड लेट अस कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम हियर इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग सो पेशेंट एंड लिसनिंग सो पेशेंटली थैंक्स अच्छा थैंक यू ठीक है गुड नाइट दादा वो नेक्स्ट सेशन टावर कब है अभी नेक्स्ट सेशन पाइथन अब आर की हाँ अब आर की रोबी बारे हाँ अब आर नेक्स्ट संडे आर मंडे अच्छा रोबी बारे वही साढ़े सात मंडे जो साढ़े सात हम्म तेरा मंडे ते सोशल डे टाव चुजे ये रात्रि वाला शरा होता है ना टाइम तो मान तुम्हें ये बोलो रिकॉर्डिंग करे जो दीरा हो अलग बस शुभिदा आमी पढ़े देखेंगे तो बोलूं ना लेकिन एक टाइम कोड स्टेशन अमर मिस हो जाएगा अच्छा अच्छा हाँ आप आज के टाइम रिकॉर्ड कोड़ा हुए से दरा आगे रिकॉर्डिंग टाइम